and see Billy Webb.
Good morning and welcome to worship on this, the second Sunday of Epiphany, to those of you who are joining us in church and those who are joining us online. Um, just a couple of notices to share with you before we begin this morning. Uh, firstly, for those of you who are hoping that your children will join Pulford School next year, so not this September coming, but the one afterwards, do please be aware that we have a religious attendance pack so if you would like your, to ask us about one of those, do come and check in with us at the door um, at church. Also, we have the forms out for those who are interested in confirmation. And we're also talking informally to people about um, admission to First Communion, which is children really from the ages of seven up who would like to be admitted to First Communion before confirmation. So again, do come and talk to me about that one if you would like. Uh, and you'll see again the notices of the Christmas collection. So thank you again to everyone who helped to support all our collections and our away giving over the festive season and some dates for the diary for you. Um, and the only one of those that I particularly want to point out to you is that next Sunday, the 22nd of January, our service of evening prayer will be uh, for Christian unity. So we'll be inviting members of our other local churches to come and join us here as we worship together in the middle of the week of prayer for Christian unity. So do join us for that. And having looked at the back sheet of the new sheet, we have had um, notification just yesterday, which is why it is still on here, that the public transport meeting has been cancelled or postponed I think so please don't join us at 10 o'clock next Saturday for that meeting we will notify people again um, when we have a further date for that so thank you very much let's keep a moment of quiet as we prepare ourselves for worship today
Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So we join together in our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadows of his hands, he hid me. He made me polish an arrow, and in his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, 
You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have laboured in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be a servant, to bring J Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honoured in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. The Lord says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes from Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as my light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, the one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. From Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, 
to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you at the end, to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. That is the word of our Lord. with you. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptising with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. <coughs> I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptise with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptises with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with his two disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him and say, say this, and they followed him. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, The rabbi, which translated means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Kephas, which is translated Peter. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Many years ago, my company sent me on a management skills course aimed at improving my confidence in interpersonal skills and public speaking. The course was developed by the late American writer and lecturer Dale Carnegie. One of the particular skills I was coached in involved how to introduce a guest or visiting speaker. There was a knack in warming up your audience about the guest's renowned fame, their specialist knowledge, and any other pertinent clues. You had to accomplish this before you then turned and extended your arm, welcoming him or her to a customary round of applause. So did you notice how John the Baptist welcomed Jesus in our Gospel reading? He declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Agnius Day is part of our liturgy at the Eucharist, which the choir will sing later on, as we approach the altar rail to receive Christ's body and blood in Holy Communion. It is important, firstly, though, to understand the context within which our Gospel passage is set. It is divided roughly in half, each recording the events of the two days following that upon which Jesus was baptised by John the Baptist. This passage from chapter 1 of John's Gospel is part of his portrayal of how Jesus is revealed in all his glory in this season of Epiphany. 
it is an important passage from Scripture too, as I will outline. We only actually hear it once every three years, as set by the lectionary. So, in the first half of the passage, we heard how John the Baptist points to Jesus, the Lamb of God. He testifies to Jesus as Son of God because of what he witnessed when he baptised him. He testifies, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. It is a first-hand account that John records in his Gospel. John the Baptist is famous for many things, but the central and most important role he has in the New Testament is to point away from himself and towards Jesus. In particular, here in John's Gospel, he points him out as Jesus God's Lamb, and with that he indicates at the very start of the Gospel story how things are going to end and why. Jesus is to die a sacrificial death for the sins of the world. Jesus is the true Passover lamb. Earlier in this chapter of John's Gospel, John the Baptist, in all his humility, has explained his role in rejecting any praise as he predicts the coming of the one whom he is unworthy. John explains John the Baptist's role as befits one sent by God, he perceptibly recognises Jesus as Lamb of God, as one who existed beforehand, and as God's chosen one. John the Baptist's testimony comes in the presence of a crowd, people poured out from Jerusalem, the people of Israel. They witness Jesus being called Lamb of God, and hear about Jesus, upon whom John the Baptist has seen the Spirit descend. The image of lamb has in the tradition behind the Gospel connotations of both the suffering servant, as prophesied by Isaiah, and the Passover lamb. In our Christian tradition, the Passover lamb points to the atonement by its association with the death of Jesus and of the suffering servant. John the Baptist's use of Lamb of God points to the redeeming work that Jesus has come to fulfil. He is revealing Jesus Christ as Saviour for the people of Israel and the world. This is the truth we particularly celebrate during this season of Epiphany as we come to understand who Jesus truly is from the words of Scripture. So we move to the second half of our Gospel passage. Jesus is once exclaimed as the Lamb of God by John the Baptist. This day, Jesus meets two of John the Baptist's disciples, one of them we're told who is Andrew. Later, he also meets Andrew's brother Simon. We heard how Jesus is followed by these two disciples. And of course he asked them what they are looking for. Addressing Jesus as Rabbi, they ask him where he is staying. This is a great passage to build up in your mind's eye. You might construct a mental picture or just get a sense of what it was like to be there on that shore beside the lake with a couple of friends as Jesus approaches. And then next comes the turning point. These two disciples, who up to now had followed John the Baptist, now leave him behind and follow Jesus. What might have led them to switch their allegiance in this way? And so Jesus invites Andrew and the other disciple to come and see. The whole text underlines the concrete and symbolic meaning of different ways of seeing Jesus, or of being seen by him, or of coming to him, 
or of finding him. This is what Epiphany is all about, and our gospel passage moves from John the Baptist, that great forerunner, to Jesus and the first disciples, who now continue the Christian journey that they've embarked upon with Jesus. When we read a passage like this from the Bible, we might recognise that there is more of a two-way process going on than the people in the story realised at the time. What Andrew, the other disciple, and Simon thought they were doing was looking for the Messiah, Jesus himself. What they didn't realise was that the Messiah was looking for them. Eager in their excitement, they had no idea what this was going to involve. I guess sometimes do we. Up to now, the narrative has only told us about John the Baptist and the people sent from Jerusalem to check him out. We are not likely to identify with them, but now here it seems are ordinary characters, people on a quest looking for something. I'd like to think that most of us have a Bible at home, which sometimes we read, some maybe sometimes more regularly than others, because it's important to us. In your own journey of faith, you may have been quietly nudged, as John the Baptist suggested to Andrew and the other disciple, that you give Jesus a closer look. So here you are, this passage of John's Gospel that you've just heard, it lies open before you. As the passage ends, Andrew is bringing Simon to meet Jesus. Overcome with joy, he tells his brother, we have found the Messiah. When you speak to Jesus in the silence of prayer, try and share with him about who you might like to bring to him. Andrew, Simon and the other disciple provide us with an example to follow. Andrew particularly fulfills this task as he hears the testimony of John, particularly fulfills this task as he hears the testimony of John, believes and then immediately testifies to what he has seen and heard. And we read in this gospel story, in the hope of finding out more about Jesus, may discover that he is simultaneously coming to find us. So in this season of Epiphany, this story is a reminder that we too are drawn into this revelation of Jesus. We are now God's church, God's people, the message of the good news to bring to the community around us. Through our own baptism, we are now called to pick up the baton on our own journeys of faith. How are we revealing Jesus to the non-believers in this community. Through our discipleship, may each of us recognise and share those epiphany moments with the people we each meet in our daily lives this week and in the weeks to come. Amen. So we stand together as the people of God and declare our faith in God in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. So we pray to God the Father, who guides all who seek him in faith. As you have called your chosen ones to be your witnesses, give power to the church to witness faithfully. Since by grace we have known the true Messiah, may we make him known to others. As the first disciples followed Christ to his dwelling, so may his servants at this time come to him and rest with him. So we pray for Justin, our Archbishop, Alan, Bishop of this diocese, and his assistant, Richard. We pray for the new Bishop of Hartford elect, Jane, as she prepares for her consecration as Bishop in a few weeks' time. We pray especially as a diocese for the work of churches together. At the beginning of this week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray for the unity of your church. You inspired the disciples to build up your church you created, and it is our discipleship which must sustain it. Whatever divisions have grown up between denominations, never let us take our eyes off your son. Never let us forget what our churches are for, and never let us stray from your purpose. But may we always seek partnership and reconciliation, as your son Jesus did. We ask for your blessing on our team ministry as we journey through this new year in our life of faith. We pray especially for the Christian nurture amongst us in the here and now, in all we do together as Christ's church in this place. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the people of this world with wisdom to know the Lord and the will to follow him. Holy Spirit, descending on him and abiding in him, enter into the dark places of the world to banish ignorance and reveal the Saviour who has come. We hold in prayer the people of those nations where war, violence, civil unrest or natural disaster cloud the revelation of Christ to his people. We remember particularly this morning the people of the Ukraine and California we pray for the work of aid agencies as they seek to bring a sense of normality for refugees and those who've lost homes and livelihoods. Lord, we pray especially at this time for the peoples of the Holy Land, for a sustained peace where your work of salvation was first witnessed. In our own nation, we pray for our King and his government. Guide our ministers who represent us to work with wisdom, justice and integrity for the common good of all. And we give you thanks for our freedom and for our lives of peace. Lord, in your mercy. As Andrew brought his brother to Christ, so may we bring to him those who are close to us, who not, but do not yet know the fullness of his love, May he come into our homes and make them his own. May he, the great teacher, give light to all who teach and all who learn in this community. Lord, there are many people in our community whose hearts and minds have been touched by the story of your son's birth into the world. We pray that you would help them to hold on to the message of this greatest gift to them, that they may know Christ for the rest of their lives. Give us the desire and capacity to serve you in serving others, to challenge those who ignore the public good, 
to champion the marginalised, the deprived and the oppressed, and to share your hope in the love of Christ. May your kingdom embrace our society with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Have mercy on those who seek rest and cannot find it. Give them hope in Christ, who calls seekers to find their peace in him. Come to the lonely ones who have no one to walk with them and show them the way. May they find human friendship and divine love. <coughs> Lord, we pray for all those who are continuing to suffer through the effects of our overstretched National Health Service, the economic situation and the travel disruption. <coughs> May the light of Christ ever bring hope and comfort to those families of this nation as they seek to maintain their livelihoods. Lord, we hold in prayer those we know for whom this new year presents them with unemployment, anxiety, loneliness, infirmity, or ill health. Our prayers have been particularly asked this morning for Marjorie Buick, Ronald Colbert, Jean Ogilvy, George Plenderleith, Sharon McNeely, David Williams, Doris Robertson, Joan Thompson, Mary Wake, and Thelma Harris. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant eternal rest, we pray, to those who have come to the last, to where Christ dwells in glory. As they have sought him and tried to serve him in this world, may they see him with full vision and abide in him forever. We pray for those who've recently died, remembering before you the souls of Michael Sharrett, Ernest Reginald Kinnaird, Louis Hervé Celebron. And, as, and we remember with fondness the lives of those who died in years past, whose year's mind occurs at this time. Annie Norman, Mary Dell, Dennis Holroyd, Glennis Johnston, Danny Munro, Deanne Milne, Monica Bacon, Maurice Greenstead, and Dolly Harmer. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray all these things in the name of Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and so rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Alban and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all your people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come to the peace. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Gracious God, accept the offering of your church, the hearts of your people joined in praise and thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours, always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time, we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. So let us pray together with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through the light of your glory, that the, through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now I think we're going to see what our Sunday school have been up to. So do come and join us at the So I know you've been thinking about the same gospel passage that we've been having today. Do you want to tell me what you've got? So we've been looking at sharing with each other. So first, our activity was sharing sweets, and then we got to eat them after, and we had to share them with our... We got into Pez and we had to share... So we passed the cup round and then gave the sweet out, and then we made cards for people. Was the sharing hard or was that easy? Um, quite easy. Okay. Qualification in there, I noticed that. But, but yeah, I think the grown-ups would find it similar. And so you've all got something with you. Don't you? We got into partners and we made cards for those partners, the officing person. Lovely. So is there something that's about to happen now? So they made cards for each other, passing on the word that Jesus loves them. So it's the good news to pass on that Jesus loves you. So we wanted to sh talk about sharing today and sharing the good news. Brilliant. So you picked up very closely on what our lay reader Jeff was saying to us in our sermon today. He used a fancy word. He used testimony and testify quite a lot. But it's basically the same thing. We hear about Jesus and in our gospel today, we saw how... Um, People brought each other to Jesus and then spoke about Jesus to those around them. So I think those of you who've received a card today, but even those of you who haven't, maybe as you go through the rest of this week, maybe you could think about who you could share that good news with. And if you have any sweets, you could share those as well. So thank you to our Sunday school. Do go and sit. Let's give them a big round of applause. Do go and sit down. Now, before we get too settled, I know we have a considerable number of birthdays to acknowledge and celebrate today. So it is Hannah's birthday today. Happy birthday, Hannah. Um, tomorrow is Andrea's birthday and Lindsay's birthday. Mrs. Bevis isn't with us today, but I'm sure she would want to, that to be acknowledged in worship this morning. Um, and who else do we have? We have Flory, don't we? Which is a few days' time? On Tuesday. So, it's a memory test for you today. Please can we sing happy birthday to Hannah, Andrea, Lindsay and Flory. Is that all right? Thank you. Happy birthday. Wonderful. And so with all that joy in our hearts, we're going to keep up our theme of following Jesus and sharing his love as we sing our final hymn, number 560. Will you come and follow me?
Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.